you ever wonder why we're here? You know, it's one of life's greatest mysteries. I don't know, man. But it keeps me up at night. <laughs> Welcome, Burke. Good to finally chat with you again. Weird to think that it's it's already been like quite a few months since we did our Half Life uh, discussion. Doesn't does it does that feel super long ago to you? It, it really does feel like a lifetime. But my life has been moving pretty fast in a lot of different venues. I'm like, huh? How did I get here? <laughs> um, but yes, our our last discussion was Half Life. Uh, but the discussion before that was our last year's April Fool's uh, recording, which to this day still gets people in the comment section who don't understand that's an April Fool's joke. I love when you, t like, yo, someone just did a really fucking dumb comment, and I'm like, God damn. <laughs> yes, <laughs> someone someone uh, summarized that entire video perfectly, which is the guy, the meme of the guy holding up the fish to see the solar eclipse. <laughs> Me introducing an innocent mind to the cosmic horrors that is 343 Industries. But kind of tangentially related to that, uh, we, we that, that whole video, we kind of talked about a company. Today, we're going to branch off from us normally talking about games. And we're going to talk about another company. Um, although this company is very much connected to video games and owes its existence to a particular favorite of, of mine and yours as well, to Halo. Mm -hmm. We are, of course, here to talk about Rooster Teeth. Today, two guys are going to be talking and chatting and discussing the downfall and the closure of Rooster Teeth. What do you What do you know about Rooster Teeth, Burke? How long have you been a uh, how, how long have you been aware of Rooster Teeth? I think since two thousand four, two thousand five, like near the very beginning. Um, my first exposure because uh, my folks finally got like the newer cable uh, for a little bit was fear of it. Panic. They're yes. Fear of the yeah. Mind. Panics aired on uh, G4 TV. And then very shortly after, because I grew up in the new ground generation as well. One of my friends from the new ground was like, guys, you should check out this thing called red versus blue. Little did I know that this was going to haunt me for the rest of my fucking life. <laughs> and, uh, so I've been on, I was actually on the website as a user, yep. I think since 2005, 2006, so I could get that like earlier premiere of episodes because I signed on by the third season halfway through it of Red vs. Blue. Like I, I've been in the thicket of it for a long time, but like an adult, right? When you get older, like, oh, I got other things to do in my life. You kind of just fade out of that a little bit. So when do you think you kind of, you said you faded out. When, when do you think that happened? It's not going to be a big fucking surprise in timing, but around Ruby season three was roughly when I could translate like a complete kind of cutting away from it. Okay, at a we'll, certain point. we'll get into that. We'll get, we'll yeah, get, but to, I'm saying, like, we'll it's, get into that. It's, yep. it's really funny because it's not directly related to that, but it's about the same time. You know what I mean? Like the timing couldn't have been more perfect. I mean, my fade away might have been directly related to that. So I'll, I'll say my, my intro to Rooster Teeth. Um, it's, it's funny. I was about to say that I joined in kind of later. But I realized, mm -hmm. compared to the whole lifespan of Rooster Teeth, I guess I was there pretty early. I would have... The very earliest Red vs. Blue, I remember, was was Season 5. And it was the last... Okay. The it, It's so funny. I, it, I've had to learn the season numbers, because I just associate this every season with what game it's taking place in. So I remember when it was on... <laughs> when they were still in Halo 2, and they had finally transitioned into Halo 3. Um, and mm -hmm. that was the... Oh gosh, you, Freelancer. The, the Freelancer saga. What was it? It was Reconstruction. I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. I don't remember those series too well because I remember was it Halo Four or Five that they did the more recent stuff with like Church's outro about heroes and where I thought it ended pretty perfectly. There were many seasons where they could have ended it perfectly. Oh yeah. Um, I should also say, I saw the finale. I don't know if you did. You had to pay like 15 bucks to see it. A, for, a what? A red versus blue? A red versus blue season finale that they released 
like this year, like in April or May. What? It was, it was not too long ago. I'll get into that later. I'll just say, I'll, I mean, I'll start by saying it wasn't good. <laughs> oh. It was, it was pretty sad. Yeah, they ended it. Um, kind of interesting. They, they brought back Matt Hollum and Bernie Burns to write the last, it wasn't a, a last season. It was just, it was kind of like a short movie. Huh. Um, shot entirely in Halo Infinite. So that already kind of puts off the red flags of like something's wrong here. And uh, they kill. I can censor this for the, the YouTube video, but I can yeah, tell you. Yeah, you can tell me. Uh, they kill off. Ooh. It's not done in like a meaningful way. It's done almost as like a joke. And the whole time you're watching it thinking like, is this, is this a joke that they're about to pay off? Is, it, is something funny going to happen here? And it, they don't. And it's just kind of awkward. And it just leaves a bitter, bitter taste in your mouth the whole, for the rest of that shitty finale. That's rough. Yeah. Another thing. As we all know, Joel is no longer at Rooster Teeth. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, we're getting right into it. I, had all, I was ho- hoping to have all this stuff spaced out, but I'll quick <laughs> say this part. Um, Joel is not Caboose. They have another voice actor for Caboose. He does his best. It sounds off and really rough. And they could have done a thing where they have Caboose either be like quiet or have him not talk a lot. There's a lot of those Caboose moments in RVB when they're trying to be emotional where he's, he's kind of quiet. And that, that's that that makes it even more emotional because Caboose, he's always the, the, the comedic relief. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they all they all kind of are, but him especially. But, and so when he's kind of quiet and emotional, you can tell like, oh, now things are serious. They could have done that. They could have sp- used him sparingly. They didn't. They were confident that no one would notice that Caboose's voice sounds completely wrong. But I noticed, and the whole movie sounds really off because of it. It's hard. It's a hard watch. The lights keep blinking when certain things happen. Like every time the news feed talks about that big mean guy who keeps attacking stuff. Or when I talk to myself about being alone. Voice actors are the character sometimes, and I hate to say that. That's a, the succinct way to put it. Especially in Red vs. Blue, where those voice actors, their personalities are shining through to the characters. There's no L in it. It's pronounced both. That's what I'm saying. Both. Both. You sound like such an ass the way you say it. And I'll say, so going back to Rooster Teeth, I, I jumped on... Kind, I would probably say like late, later 2000s. So it would have been season five, them going on to season six and seven. I was fully getting on board when they were doing like the Halo 3 uh, RVB stuff. When they were they mm-hmm. were introducing the freelancers, Agent Washington, the meta. Um, when we get to Revelations, there was that amazing, amazing fight. CGI Money Ohm fight, which... Uh, I, I remember when Red vs. Blue was only on uh, Rooster Teeth's website. But they liked that fight scene so much that they clipped it and uploaded that episode to YouTube just to get the views because they knew everybody would like it. And they did. Everybody liked it. <laughs> I'd be remiss also not to shout out an amazing recent Halo 3 mod that replicates that fight arena as a playable, fully playable co-op Halo 3 mission that you can play. It's kind of amazing. It's, it's pretty astonishing what they were able to pull off. It's, it's literally you play as Red Team fighting against an AI-controlled Tex who's custom animated and is super overpowered and is a huge bullet sponge, but it's kind of awesome. But yeah, that's kind of what I got into, when I got into Rooster Teeth was around that era when they were doing Achievement Hunter. Before they did Let's Plays, everyone forgets. It's like, oh, Achievement Hunter, that was their Let's Play channel. No, that was their Achievement Hunter channel. That's where they went and did Achievement Hunts, or they would do very basic guides and walkthroughs. I remember uh, their their Splinter Cell Conviction co-op walkthrough. I, for some reason, that's like a weird core memory. I vividly remember watching those. Secret Agent Bob and Special Agent Steve. Being like, oh, man, I really want to get into this. <laughs> I, I want to play Splinter Cell. Um, which is ironic because Conviction, that was the worst one. But yeah, uh, that's kind of when I started watching them. 
got into the podcast, although back then it was called The Drunk Tank. I remember the, the Drunk Tank episode 100. That was when they, I think that was the first one they did where they went with the video. And from there, the, it became the RT podcast, kind of just took off, became its own thing. And weirdly enough, spawned a weird podcast network. We'll get into that. I, I've been saying that a lot so far, but we're going to get into this the stuff. The network of podcasts? Yeah, we're, we'll talk about that. But yeah, let's talk about those early days, the good days, the good old days with Rooster Teeth. What drew you to Rooster Teeth? And that's probably a big question. There's probably a lot. It's not not an easy not, there's no easy answer for that. I, I think the initial answer is if you're a Halo kid, Halo content. Absolutely. At least when Red vs. Blue was there. And then, you know, it was kind of... Because I was, I was fairly young. I wasn't even in high school yet, right? So kind of edgy humor, and it kind of ducked yep. what, a lot of what I was watching. And <clears throat> the writing was really funny. And it was you could tell it was just a bunch of folks having a good time in a studio it it really showed it really showed that there were people just having a grand old time in a recording booth and the community was really fun to talk to uh i remember spent a lot of time on their forums back in the day and it was always fun getting like zings or sick burns and stuff like the rating system they had it wasn't just like a normal hey you did good or you did bad it was like zing or specifically that and there was always that race to get one of those comments at least when i was a younger kid i I thrived off that positive or negative reinforcement i was on achievementhunter.com i remember when a new game would come out it'd always be a rush everybody would try and figure out the best ways to get all the achievements for whatever whatever weird random game came out on xbox oh achievement hunter was was the icing on top for me that was like peak but yeah what kept me around was the community especially in the early days you got to know a lot of people and i i made a lot of friends i unintentionally probably talked to gavin without realizing it because it was that early in the system wow yeah that would have been yeah you would have been on there really early because I, I remember a lot of users. I'm not going to like fucking talk about them right now because you can't go back to it now. It's gone. It's totally gone. Yeah. That's the fuck. So that was that's what fucking hit me. I was like, all right, Burke, we're going to do this talk. We'll go to the website. And I'm like, cool. I know my old login. I'm going to go find my old comments. Yep. Uh, you're, you're, you must have been in for a rude awakening when you went to that new website. Because I was like, oh, sweet. I have my old like my old notebook that had my computer passwords from back then. They got rid of man. Yeah. They got rid of all the forums. It, yeah, it's really sad what the website turned into. There, it pre the website predated YouTube, and it was yeah. a bi- at a certain point it was bigger than YouTube. It was more active. There was more people on it. You know, it was it was a more more of a community than YouTube even was. You went to like homestarrunner.com. Yep. I think that guy with glasses, Cinema Massacre, like any of the like the oh, God, bigger yeah. YouTube names, you can yeah. Like, but like they had their own dedicated website for their material. That's an old phase of the internet that I don't think people remember. Is that used to be a thing where everyone would just kind of have their own website, and you would you would either have your RSS feed or you would just go to the website semi regularly just to check to see if there were new uploads. The fact that it was very split off, and there were obviously like big communities, and they're obviously like. The Rooster Teeth community is orbited by many other communities and is itself orbiting other much larger communities. Like, it's a big network. You know, you connect, connect Rooster Teeth to things like Mega64, or you go even bigger, you connect it to places like Machinima, the, the whole Machinima craze going on at the time. Obviously, you have big kind of connections there, but Rooster Teeth was also very squarely its own thing. And so there was a bigger sense of community, is you would be... You would be focused on just this particular forum page, and it would just be that. It would just be you and people like you who were there for the exact same type of content, which doesn't really exist anymore. Everything is centralized. It's either you're on YouTube, or you have a Twitter, or you have a Discord, and that's it. That's all you have. And because of that, everything is just big and loud and obnoxious, and everyone's yelling over each other, and there's no... like. the age of the forum is kind of over, Burke. As it does, isn't that kind of sad to think about? It, there's still pockets on the internet for it, but for the average user, yeah. Like I, I deliberately go looking for forums sometimes because I want, I have very specific things I want to see, and that's what they're good for. But yeah, it, it is nuts to see that all gone. And oh yeah, Vegas sixty four. Thank you for reminding me about that. Just yeah, it was a bigger thing than I thought it was. Uh, Rooster Teeth especially, just their content. It, it, I think you nailed it. Kind of edgy, and as someone, you know, becoming a edgy preteen into a teen, you hear that, you hear this, sh- all these shows with people saying fuck and swearing, 
and cussing and having funny jokes. It's like, man, this is this is made for me. This is this is way better than television. This is funny. It's doesn't take itself too seriously, but it can when it wants to in rare moments. It was quick as a whip too with some of the banter. It was just funny, and you could tell the people making it. Yeah resonated with each other and there is that part with rooster teeth where the early days especially everybody at the company was on the same page everyone knew what they were going for everyone knew what they were making and what they wanted to make they've, they've talked about that before the like the early founders those ogs people like bernie jeff gus people like matt mm -hmm. joe even joel like they were all under they all understood what they were making and they were in sync with each other hurry quick just kill me please hurry it'll be fun i'm a dick None of our guns work. We just have them for show. Mine is just a purse. Ah, you know, never mind. Ugh. Hey, can I ask you one quick question? As time went on, as this company became a little bigger, you could kind of tell that there, there was people were pulling away from each other. There, there, you could tell that there was like some uncomfortableness going on at the studio. That's that's kind of and that it was around then, like like around Ruby and like I'd say like around 2014 so 2014 I guess I'm kind of going into history in 2014 that's when full screen acquired Rooster Teeth that was the moment Rooster Teeth was no longer their own company they became acquired they got acquired mm -hmm. by full screen and from there they were stuck under these much larger media companies full screen got restructured by the company Otter Media in 2018 I, f I don't know how somehow it joined with Warner Discovery that was when Warner joined with AT&T when they merged and Rooster Teeth got caught up in all of that and ironically that's also how it died thanks to Warner Discovery deciding hey we don't want this weird weird little company that isn't making money anymore we're just gonna get rid of it but yeah history rooster teeth just it was it was fun at first really fun really exciting and it got real boring and then it got some of the stuff got real unwatchable and the, pe the people behind the, the company became very insufferable there was a, there was that moment there was a, there was a, there's always that moment when you're watching something you like when you're watching and it's specifically like internet content where you're watching something or watching someone that you used to like and you're just like I'm not liking this anymore or like I'm I think I've grown past I think I've grown up like I think I'm gonna watch something else mm -hmm. and I, I had those moments a lot because I, I stuck with the podcast the RT podcast that was my jam that got me into podcasts they, they were good for study sessions when I was studying oh, yeah. at university playing a game just put it on the background um, and I, I vividly remember when the podcast started getting really insufferable and it's like man they're, these guys are less fun to listen to and there was just a day where I'm like, I'm not going to listen. <laughs> I, and every now and then I would tune back in, like, I'll listen to one one off podcasts. And it's like, oh, yeah, now I remember why I didn't I stopped listening to these. You want to talk about what you thought was peak Rooster Teeth? Because I'll tell you for what I thought was peak. You tell me. Rooster Teeth was doing those shorts where it had, like, the actual voices behind, like, Gus and Bernie doing, like, office skits or, like, playing catch in the field. Those early RT shorts. Skits that's. Yeah, RT shorts. I thought that was legitimately peak Rooster Teeth. I'm like, oh, not only can they do this, but they can actually do real skits. And they're amazing and they're fantastic. I loved them. I still quote <laughs> them occasionally. I, yeah, I, I love those those shorts. And it was nice because it was, you would start with the show and then you would see the shorts and it's like, oh, there's that's the voice of Simmons. Or that's, hey, that's Griff. Or, and that's that's Church right there. That's, that's Caboose. Yeah. It's kind of funny. And it... It really put a face, and like it, when I went back and rewatched the those, because I actually have the Rooster Teeth, Red vs. Blue seasons one through five on fucking DVD. Oh, you're such a nerd. Like, I am a fucking nerd. Like, but it was really cool to be. Oh, I have a face. Like, you know, I've probably seen it before, but now I have like a definitive face with these people, and I, I, it was just a moment of connection for me. And I was like, oh, this is peak. I think this is the best part. Peak Rooster Teeth. I loved when they were doing all of their little machinimas you mentioned it earlier mm. but panic there was supreme surrender there was <laughs> strain, uh, strangerhood and they've talked about that before there was a period of time where they thought they were just going to be doing only machinima stuff because companies were hiring them too they they've talked about like behind the scenes stuff where 
There was a period of time in the mid 2000s where Rooster Teeth did essentially, they did everything that involved recording a video game. Like if you think about it, like late 2000s, mid to late 2000s, mm-hmm. people didn't have capture cards. Companies didn't know how to like record footage of a game and like have that as a video file, either as like a game demo or to record like gameplay for a trailer or commercial. And so there was a period of time where Rooster Teeth were, they were making most of that. To the point where if you remember those game kiosks, you go into like a Best Buy and there'd be like a game kiosk, Mm -hmm. like an Xbox propped up with like a controller like propped up and there's like a little screen that you have to stare up at and you get maybe you see like you get to play a a game demo or something that they're showcasing, right? Mm -hmm. And when it wasn't being used, there would always be like a be footage of gameplay. Obviously, so it's not just a static screen of someone standing still in a game. You'd actually see something, some gameplay footage. A lot of the times that was Rooster Teeth. That was that was Gus or Jeff who had gotten a copy of that game early, just playing it and getting as much footage as they could and then handing it back to the publisher saying, here, use use this footage for whatever you want to use it for. Because Rooster Teeth were desperate for money. They were doing every little odd job they could just to stay afloat. Stay afloat, yeah. It's very interesting. I'd, I'd be curious to go back and find... I'd be curious to know how many games they did. And I'd be curious to know if any of that's, like, archived somewhere. Lost, uh, Internet Archives will probably come up with something eventually. That's, like, the place I always go to when I d- want to do real digging on the Internet. There, Yeah, there is a, uh, there's currently an effort to archive all of Rooster Teeth's stuff. I don't know if you've been keeping an eye out for that. Every video, everything, every show, as many shows as the people can find, because guess what? Rooster Teeth are hiding and deleting some of them. <laughs> But yeah, that era, like them doing like the RT shorts, them branching off of doing other stuff. The web comic, I remember that. Slow-mo guys were starting to take off. Yeah, slow-mo guys. That was it. That was peak Rooster Teeth. The company becoming big, everything coming together, and then immediately it was like, oh God, what's happening? Everything's falling apart. (laughs) And I don't know what you think. I don't know what you would say like the first moment you thought something was wrong happened. But I kind of know what it would have been for me. Go ahead and share. I'll, I'll see if I can't follow up. RVB season nine. And then there was season one of Ruby. Mm. And there was a period, there was a little window where I remember thinking like, oh, I'm not, I don't like this. <laughs> Ruby is rough. Like the opening of Ruby is rough. I never liked Ruby. Every person I know who has kept watching Ruby always says that it's terrible and that they don't know why they keep watching it because they're overinvested. And I don't under, I don't understand. <laughs> I get is that it? Well, is the lost cost fallacy. Lost sunk, cost fallacy. Sunk um, cost fallacy is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, sunk cost. Thank you. It's I've put so much time on this. I want to see if it ends right cuz I, I won't lie to you. Uh, I was that kid that had like the edgy OC with the fucking scythe when yeah, I played that's... D&D. So Ruby for me was the like, yo, I get to see that in action. It's the characters. And then immediately it's... going, "Oh no." <laughs> It's the characters. It's I think everyone just likes the character designs. People people use those designs wherever. Like in the famous uh, film, the the award winning film Putis Engaged. <laughs> 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 but with the, uh, I, I totally lost my train of thought there. Ruby is the best animated music video short film that they mistakenly turned into a TV show. That's Ruby to mm-hmm. me. It's hey, These designs look cool. The art style maybe works if it's only three minutes long and you're not paying attention to it and there's music going on. And maybe the maybe the choreography is pretty good. And that's it. Then you're out. Then you're you're done. You're done. You can't you can't write for shit. It's almost like Monty made almost exclusively combat music videos before that or something. Ex- yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've also had not not me personally with a not this person personally, mm-hmm. but the one of the main writers behind Ruby, he left w- then went on to to essentially make a bad prequel to a game that I loved which was Slave Zero. <gasps> Yeah, they made a Slave Zero prequel, uh, which I got in hot water for. The fighter for. game one, right? Fighter game, which the pre- that's a prequel to a very good mecha third-person shooter, giant mecha, Gundam, oh, hold on. Gundam-sized mecha, which is way better than the fighting game. I just don't like fighting games, I guess. In my video, 
I openly s stated I do not have any interest in this prequel. And I may have even said some defamatory stuff. Of, not defamatory. I, I may have said, like, some mean things about how the fact that a Ruby writer was attached to it might be a big red flag. And someone <laughs> got okay mad. I have an opinion. Someone got mad in the comments. And it was, <laughs> it was someone who worked on the game who kind of got <laughs> mad at me. And so that's where I am at, Burke. That's <laughs> that's my that's where I'm at with Ruby writers and them going around hurting my favorite old games from the 90s. That's where I'm at. <laughs> they just can't leave your stuff alone. They can't leave me alone. <laughs> Ruby <laughs> is might be one of the worst written things I have ever listened to. I tried, I tried to go back and watch a couple episodes in preparation for this, Burke. Season one's almost unwatchable. I forgot how unwatchable it is. I can handle bad animation. I don't mind bad animation at all. If it, mm -hmm. I, I've watched Xavier Renegade Angel. Okay, I can, I can enjoy. <laughs> How the dare shittiest, you share my brain cell? <laughs> the shittiestly animated uh, cartoon. I can I can get around that so long as the writing is decent. I fucking like. I love Arby and the Chief. It is a guy holding two action figures on camera, <laughs> voicing them with Microsoft Sam. Okay, it's the writing. It's the writing that matters, and it just isn't there for Ruby. I I'm I think I'm the same way with you, Burke. I think I stuck it out for a couple seasons i i think i stopped watching when they when they were no longer like at, at a school i think that was it i think i gave up when that ended because i'm like yeah this is you know the action's pretty good who knows where the story's gonna go and it got worse and worse and then i'm like i think i'm done i think i'm done with not just with ruby with like with rooster teeth because ray had left by then and everything was getting bad i'm shitting on ruby it's okay to shit on ruby but part of the blame kind of goes to what happened to rvb do you remember what season nine was you probably don't remember uh they did the prequel with the the full mercs where it was all cg animated right that was season nine and it was also all set inside a simulation set in halo reach and it was i don't remember that second half <laughs> it was boring it was that was it was that was all it was. It was Church is stuck inside a Halo Reach simulation, and every now and then it cuts back to prequels, prequel freelancer CGI stuff. And it started to show that the writing wasn't that good. I think the thing that the Halo 3 series had, I, and I'm just going to call it, it was like the, like the Reconstruction era, those three seasons, season six, seven, and eight. There was an adventure. There was a goal. And it felt like, it's like, oh my gosh, we're, we're constantly working up to this, you know, to this fight, to this encounter, to this thing. And there wasn't any of that in season nine. And it kind of made me realize, like, oh man, like, there's nothing here. Like, it's it's fun CGI fights, but I don't know who any of these characters are. I don't care about any of these characters. There's the meta. I, I, I like him because he died last season. But that, that was kind of it. And then it was Church fucking around in Halo Reach with simulations of red team and blue team and then they all just i presumably they all die in the end because church gets taken out of the simulation and they're just they're just destroyed or something i don't know so no joke i don't remember the second half of what you talked about this season i remember the choreography fights of nine very distinctly that motorcycle chasing near the end of it yeah uh, it's the only as far as i know it's the only time they did halo reach red versus blue because then they season 10 it was back in halo 3 it was kind of the same season 10 was kind of the same thing there was flashbacks cgi flashbacks it season 10 wasn't that bad there was I remember season 10 had a really emotional scene there was carolina uh, mm -hmm. she was a bitch everyone hated her it's not tex oh we have tex at home tex at home exactly but it was kind of better because it's like okay we're in the we're in the real world and I think that's season 10. It was like Stockholm Syndrome. It's like, oh, my God, this is way better than season nine. <laughs> and that's where it should have ended. As far as I'm concerned, season 10 is where it should have ended. If I'm being real, they probably should have ended it at season five. Uh, so that's there's always a strong argument for that for five, because that is, uh, at least in my friend group, the end of classic RVB. It is. 
It is. That's um, that was the that was I I bo I'm pretty sure that was the last of the old writing team. Uh, when they moved on to reconstruction, that's kind of where it it entered. It's like edgy we want to take ourselves seriously phase that's when they got money home which they got something they got the matrix money as i like to call it you know where like the matrix had to stay up oh, yeah. in the ante yep. they call it matrix money and yeah it uh it got real weird and then see at, at least season 10 at least it didn't diverge too much but then then we get to season 11 and we go on we go on and on and on uh, they went to Halo 4. <laughs> that was the, those were pretty rough seasons. Um, everything after season 10. It, it's season nine. I, that's when the show was going downhill for me. Season 11. That's when I think everyone else realized it. Where? Yeah. This this was definitely my like my all my hairs on the back of my head were like oh shit this is uh not great. There's a civil war going on and oh, it's all set in Halo 4 and like what's happening and you all the voice actors are bad. I'm sorry, the original cast are timeless. I don't know how, for some reason, a company founded by a bunch of nerds, they all, they're all perfect voice actors. I don't understand how, I don't understand the luck of it. I don't care what anybody says. They're just good voice actors. They're, they're relatable, they're funny, they know their roles. I think it's because they also were good friends, so they weren't afraid to like take risks as friends in the same booth. And I don't think they were. I I, I guess there was a little bit of angst with Church. The rest of them, like there they were there wasn't like angst. Yeah, but Church's character is inherently like angsty. But what I'm getting at is yeah. every other character added after is real angsty. You see that a lot in like the season eleven, season twelve. I don't I don't even remember the order. It was like they were in Halo Four, and it was like a civil war going on. Yeah, and then there's the extra mercs. The extra mercs uh, with like the the spooky skull cap and all that. Yeah, yeah, and there was the 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 good guy who turned out to be evil. Who was the other merc? Whose voice I hated. Chorus trilogy. It was season yeah eleven, twelve, and thirteen. God, these went on for a while. This is all a blur to me. I'll be honest, Burke. This is a, this was a real oh, yeah. blur. Oh yeah, this is an absolute blur to me. And I remember the last thing they I stuck through. Like the last or every where I'm like, all right, RVP, I do have a sunk cost fallacy. I acknowledge it, but at least it makes me <laughs> laugh occasionally. At least it makes me laugh occasionally. The final scene where Tucker gets the meta armor, where they have that doorway standoff. I was going to say that. That was an okay ending for what was otherwise a really shitty few seasons. It was like a guy falling downhill, but then sticking the landing. And I was thinking about that. That was, That's another point where they probably should have just ended it. Um, there, there, You'll notice that a lot with Red versus Blue. There's great seasons where they should end it. Season five, they should have ended it there. That was the end of the original run. I remember being a little weirded out. Because te text just blew up because Andy the bomb blew up. <laughs> yeah, or alternatively, if you saw the... Because the, they had different endings back in the day also. What the fuck was that? That was the weirdest match I've ever played. Dude, that sucked. I got team killed in like the first 10 seconds. Sorry, that was my fault. Some guy kept screaming into the bike. Bow chicka bow wow. Dude, shut up. Um, one of them texts just murders everybody and then flies off. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a pretty good ending. Let's be, yeah, I, I, honestly, I probably, like, I probably I would have preferred. That. I probably would have preferred that. <laughs> that's what we got. Tex, come back! <gasps> hey, look, she's coming back. How about that? And that thing doesn't have uh, doesn't have weapons on it or anything, does it? Oh snap! Canonical ending. Andy the bomb. Classic RVB character. God, we haven't even even been talking about the the rvb characters do you remember the text-to-speech guy yeah. on last resort the the, or the text -to speech yeah, guy on gary Zanzibar. the robot right gary, gary, gary the, the robot who is actually um <laughs> was one of the other mercenaries ai that was the weird tie-in instead of just an ancient supercomputer that people have been fucking with remember when tucker had an alien child oh yeah like it was because it was funny <laughs> classic that, the, rvb was so good literally not limited by any give a fuck of writing well, what happened? Well, a megaton, megaton bomb went out with a weather machine, which caused a time paradox, <laughs> which sent everyone to the future that is Halo 2, and then Church to the back, which put him in fucking um, Marathon. Like, that's funny from a fucking gaming history perspective. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, season five could have ended there, would have been regarded as this fun little Halo machinima from back in the day. I understand, Stan. They, they got to keep going. So... Then they and it was on. a red winner. 
It yeah, oh was yeah. their breadwinner. It was. That's the thing. But it's it stopped being that. It had to have stopped being that at some point. With, a, with the Reconstruction era, it was pretty good. Should have ended on season eight. That would have been a perfect ending. Meta is dead. Church is living with his AI GF in a simulation. And Red and Blue team have teamed up together and... The best part of all of that is Agent Washington. He's got his blue. He's got blue armor on now, and it's like he's free is, from all this bullshit. He's free from it all. But they keep on bringing him back. Season nine. It's like at the end of season nine is oh Washington is back with Carolina. They're back working together. It's like oh wasn't he done with this shit? Oh they they do even bring that up in season ten when they they all walk away from her because they 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 have enough of her bullshit. Mm -hmm. and Washington's with them. That's the, that's the famous that's the famous caboose scene where. Church yells at everybody, and they all leave. And the last one left is Caboose, and not even Caboose wants to stay with them. Man, they man they knew how to write back in the day. I wonder who wrote that. Um, <laughs> with I, I I think that comes with the weight of knowing your franchise that long. Should have ended season ten. Then we got there's, there's, the but there's a couple of nice clean endings, <laughs> and then we got nine more seasons anyway. Oh my god, See, no season thirteen. And it should have ended there. That that was that's a classic. That's a classic. We're ending the show right here. It's our characters are about to f fight for their lives. That's it. And then, do you even remember season fourteen? No, you might not. because I didn't bother watching. That, that was that's legitimately the last thing I watched and dipped. Season fourteen is when they became utterly schizophrenic. That was the anthology season. That was what? where every single episode or couple of episodes was something completely random. There was RVB animated. There was, I don't even know what they were doing. They, they turned our, at one point they turned RVB into this like animated 3D animated telltale style looking show that had nothing to, there was no like Halo power armor in it at all. I still don't even know what that was. It was like a weird thing that was apparently red versus blue. I have no fucking clue what that was. Are you pulling my fucking leg? I'm looking this up. And then there was RVB Mega Blocks, stop motion Mega Blocks. That was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> the Burke, I'm not, I'm not kidding. What the fuck? There are 20 fucking writers. <laughs> this is when it got real bad. And this is when everybody started hating Rooster Teeth. It was pretty funny to watch, watching everybody just lose their minds at how bad this was. There was one good two-parter. Mm-hmm. It was with, and this kind of this ties into Rooster Teeth history, they brought in the Funhouse crew. And do, just quick, do you know who Funhouse is? Were you a follower of Inside Gaming before they became Funhouse? I can't say I know them very well. Okay. So brief history. Machinima. Mm -hmm. Big company, became a big thing. User by the name of, oh God, what was his name? Dead Pixels back in the day. Mm -hmm. Did a Halo 3 Machinima news show. Literally, it was animated Halo 3 Machinima, but he would he would talk about gaming news. That became Inside Gaming, and that guy was a Mr. Adam Kovic, who we're going to get back to in a little bit. Uh, and he, that kind of formed Inside Gaming, a branch of Machinima that originally was for gaming news. It really They really weren't that good when it came to gaming news. They're, they were access media, like let's be real. Um, they, had the, they had some of the worst gaming takes, which they still had when they moved to Rooster Teeth. Essentially, Machinima went defunct, and the Inside Gaming guys, at some point, the Inside Gaming, kind of near the end of Machinima, they started doing, like, um, they started doing their own shows. They there was The best one they did was they would play, like, bad old games, or just bad games, and they would kind of riff. It was like Mystery Science Theater, but it was funny. Uh, they, they played, like, really bad games. They played, like, a funny chaser game. They played one of the uh, the Sin, Sin's episode Emergence. They played that. Um, it was mm. funny. It was fun, fun, good old YouTube content. I still watch their chaser playthrough. And another case where it was a kind of a smaller group within Machinima, and they had a good... They had a good comedic timing with each other. Machinima closed down, they left, and they formed... Or, I, I'm sorry, Machinima didn't close down, they left before it closed down. It, when Machinima closed down, that's further in the future. But they formed Funhouse, a company called Funhouse, exact same people from Inside Gaming, and they were owned by Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth acquired them, or I think it... I'm, I'm not sure how it worked, it was the parent, the parent company of Rooster Teeth acquired them, and so they became part of the Rooster Teeth family. And... They, for season 14, that's kind of around the time they brought they were brought on, they had, for their anthology, they decided to do their own 
Halo 3 RVB Machinima. RVB style Machinima. I think it even takes place within actual RVB canon. I, I don't know. Actually, I, I should watch, watch my mouth before I say that. But it was fun. It was a literally, it was like the first time RVB had done just a classic old school Machinima in years. It was set in Halo 3. It was all their characters together. It was like a classic Halo 3 Machinima setting up this new orange team. Who is this orange team going to be? How are they going to play into the story? And it was funny. It didn't take itself too seriously. The voice act, they were good voice actors. They were funny interacting with each other because obviously they have that chemistry. And then they all die. And that was it. And no, there was no follow up to any of those characters. It was the one good part of that entire stupid season was that. Sorry, I'm, I'm ranting about a season from many years ago that no one has thought about probably in five <laughs> or seven years. It, your channel is dedicated to a lot of things a lot of people don't remember. Oh, but yeah, that was the worst part is that they had a good thing going and they fucked it. <laughs> you idiots. We had it all. So do you want me to tell you what happened after season 14? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm already horrified by the image you sent me of a man whose forehead you can play tic-tac-toe on. I'm horrified by this. Go on. Continue. Season, but season 15, that was Halo 5. They tried to go back to having things be a little goofy. You could tell they, they, they really wanted to go back to their old RVB days. They just never could. They never could. It started with a funny Star Wars reference with Caboose. That's how season 15 starts. It essentially, the characters from the, all the OG characters have gone missing because the, they, they fight for their lives at the end of season 13. What happened to them? And so season 15 picks up kind of what's, what they've to been doing. to answer that question. Which first off, they have this whole montage of all this funny stuff that they had done in over the course of like a few minutes. It's like, here's what we've been doing for the last God knows how long we've been here. The sad thing is their montage should have just been its own season and that would have been funnier than the actual show we got. Oof. So we built the galaxy's greatest water park. Yay! Yay! Yay. And then Donut! Whoopsie daisy! And then I don't remember. It goes back. They bring up... It goes back into Project Freelancer. Someone's going around killing all the freelancer agents. It always goes back to Freelancer. And yeah, Caroline and Washington go do stuff. And then uh, our Red and Blue do their own, their, own, uh, their own shit. Season after that, that's the time travel season. <laughs> oh, no. To be fair, you know what? They figured out that they wanted to go back to their goofy roots. It just... It, they... They didn't know how to write it. it season, I'll, I'll say this for as a hater, as a certified hater of things. <laughs> I have soft spots for parts of season 16. I think it was just the fact that it wasn't so boring. I think it was the fact that they were like time traveling around and yeah, Donut became a god, a time traveling god who got possessed and like red and blue team were just time traveling around time and space and it, it, it led to really funny moments that like griff got sent back to the middle ages <laughs> him and tucker and so tucker was in it was ruling england because he has his energy sword so they thought he was king arthur and yeah. then griff landed in italy and he had to teach them how to make pizza because he wanted pizza and so that was a bootstrap paradox he he invented pizza it was pretty funny it like it was funny like they, they, they there were parts of it Those i was like good I will, shorts those good, sound like yes. good close scenarios yes not for a, probably didn't work for a full season it's the kind of thing that like if you ever read fan fiction yes someone yes. comes up with like a funny short like a thousand word story we'll say even two thousand if they really got like a good creative flow to it that's what it is a perfect short story using these character fanfics and that's fine like there's a moment where sarge goes back in time to help save a platoon he he got killed but then he just ends up him and his old self just end up arguing with the platoon and he, they get them killed anyways <laughs> like <laughs> there's funny moments like there's funny parts i just don't think it, it probably didn't work for a whole season again those sound like really great fanfics and then it turns into there's cosmic entities that are controlling the time that's how donut got time travel it's called it's the season they called the shizno paradox i think that tells you enough <laughs> Like the Shizno, like the the, the the alien slur that they came yeah. up with in season four or three. Yeah. And then after that, it was, oh God, Singularity. I, I, I don't even, I'll be honest. I don't even think I saw that season. They, yeah. They started getting really bad. Um, but it, it was similar to that. It was uh, kind of similar. There's, there's more like 
you know, everybody is, is there's more like it's like superpowers and whatever, more cosmic stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's that was that season. Just keep scaling up. It'll never go bad. Exactly. And then after that, we get to the worst of the worst. So Zero was that's what killed Red versus Blue. That, that is literally the season that killed the show. And then Bernie and Matt had yeah. to come in and quick do their finale because the show was in such disarray. They tried to spin off Red vs. Blue Burke. They turned Red vs. Blue into a CG-only fighting show with a bunch of different characters who weren't the original cast. And that was the show. <laughs> and it was really bad. And they they were so, still they were still stuck in Halo 5, by the way. Like, they were stuck with Halo 5 character models and Halo 5 armor and Halo 5 assets. They were stuck with that. You want to know the worst thing about that? I remember seeing an advertisement for that, right? And all I got from it was they were rebooting. Like, it was like a soft reboot of the entire Rivers of Blue series, but with none of the cast. So I went, wow. Kind and then of. I just never thought about it again. <laughs> it Tucker was in it. Like, it was kind of a continuation, but we're following different characters. It was real bad. <laughs> I'll say this. Red vs. Blue is stuck with Halo. It, mm. it just is. As Halo started to decline, so did the show. And I kind of wonder how much of the show's failure has to do with the fact that they were stuck with the 343 games. Because they're stuck making a show that looks like Halo 4. And then they're stuck making a show that looks like Halo 5. Those are real ugly games. <laughs> Those are real ugly art styles, real ugly environments. It just looks ugly. And they're stuck with that. Like, they have no choice. Even when you get to Halo Infinite, that was that was their last hoorah. Like, we're going to do our Halo, our last Halo machinima, and they fucking shot it in Halo Infinite. Like, can't you guys just pull out the old Xboxes and record in Halo 3? Like, can't you just do that? <laughs> do Halo 2. Do go ba- Or even go back to Halo 2. Like, or Halo 1. Like, that'd be perfect. And wrap up the series there. Go Marathon. Fuck it. Really get it out there. But... No, it was Halo Infinite, and it just looks bad, and like, it it looks ugly. One of the funniest things, one of the funniest things in that show, and nobody, it's 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 a minor thing. It doesn't really mean much. All the characters they have slightly different armor coatings, in that they have slightly different armor patterns with their like primary and secondary colors. And I realized that's because they're stuck with Halo Infinite's awful armor coating system, where you can't just choose between red and blue. And a, a, a crimson, may, maybe more of a, a crimson red, maybe more of a maroon red. Or, hey, mm. Agent Agent Washington, he's gray with yellow shoulder pads. Oh, you can't quite do that in Halo Infinite, so you have to make do with this close enough armor color. There was a lot of that. I, I was kind of laughing at a certain point. There's a lot of that. They couldn't, rec- they, they, okay, they brought back another character. They brought back the meta. Okay, the meta, not a big surprise. It's a big draw. He possessed, he is possessing Tucker. Yeah, because he wore the armor, right? Yep, yep, because the armor. Oh, God, there's a real bad, oh, man, you're just reminding me. There's a real bad scene where the meta gets introduced. I think they lost their animation budget. <laughs> I think something happened. Um, but the, they, this character gets introduced at a like convention in the show at like a fan convention and he store that's his big reveal as he tears up this convention center what <laughs> no explanation of why everyone's in power armor but they i realized something that was bugging me they 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 didn't have the meta's colors and i'm wondering if that's because they literally didn't have it unlocked and so they had to Deal. They they changed this character. This character had a pretty iconic color scheme. Yeah, I can already like close my eyes and picture it. They didn't have that exact color scheme in Halo Infinite, so they had to like fully redesign him for with like a completely different color scheme. And you can't even tell it's him. Like the whole time they were teasing him, I'm like, is that the meta? Is that no? He's he's got different colors. It's not. Oh, it's because it's because they're stuck in Halo Infinite. He's got different colors because he's stuck in Halo Infinite. Because Halo Infinite, you can't choose your colors, Burke. You have to, you have to yeah. buy the color coatings. And it's not like three four three could just give him a key. What I find so funny about that is my color scheme in Halo is pretty similar, and I have that pain of not being able to equip my color scheme in Halo Infinite because they just don't have that, or they have weird variations that aren't quite what I want. I'm I'm happy to know that Rooster Teeth had that exact same problem. That's pretty funny. 
last moments of solidarity. It was a bad finale. It just general decline in the show. Like as Halo, as people stopped caring about Halo, you could tell that they stopped caring about Rooster Teeth. It, it, it makes sense, obviously. It is a good question you did pose, though. Was if a company builds their IP, ID, their whole brand off of this one game, and they're stuck of it for better or for worse, does that affect the product? That is a really good question. Because let's loop it back to peak. Halo 3. Yeah. The actual scene where you had Caboose and Church arguing in, was it Rat's Nest? It's the second level. Where you go down the hallway, you take a right, and then there's a guy knocking on the door. Yes. He's like, dude, let yeah. me in. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Yeah. Uh, like it, was, it was so well beloved that they put that scene in there. And it was, it was completely different dialogues for each difficulty, too. No one outside is going to know the freaking password. Now open up. We need ammo and the chief is out here. Does he know the password? He wasn't at the meeting either. I'm going to throw out something. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think as Halo, as I said, as Halo declined, that contributed to the decline of people just not caring about the, the show. I also think, I do think that Halo being as popular as it used to be, Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3 especially, I think that's what propped up the show when it might not have done that otherwise. Mm -hmm. There are many games with other machinima tools. Machinima came from Quake. That's where that word comes from, machine cinema. It was coined by a guy because they were making, not only were they making Quake machinimas, Quake machinimas, do you remember like the early, like the super early Quake machinimas that were like amazingly animated? It was to the point where it puts like early Rooster Teeth to shame when you realize like what, other creators were doing it's like holy shit like people have been animating in quake what the hell is this and that was years before like you know rooster teeth started getting into their own animation rooster teeth wasn't even the most popular thing in their own era homestar runners was running laps around them. absolutely but halo's popularity it definitely propped up the show people liked it because they liked halo it was it was kind of just an extension of halo it was you liked halo 3 hey i like hey i like rooster teeth Machinima, I like this. And it also helped tied in because that's what I remember looking for. Because especially in the early days, like Let's Plays weren't fully established no. around then. Like Markiplier, PewDiePie were just kind of getting off. Well, uh, you know, name, name your no name your favorite like Let's Player, right? Because like, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not a lot of people know mine. Not a lot of people know mine. It's Fash one two three four nine, and I'll plug him any day of the week. I love that guy. But, you know, if you didn't have a video game or, like, I didn't have the console to play Halo and I loved Halo, how do I get that content? What's the most reliable way to get that content? Rooster yep. Teeth. Yeah, just Halo is popular. So is Red vs. Blue. And I think there's a reason why that you didn't even know that they had a RVB season finale, <laughs> a series finale, because <laughs> it was in Halo Infinite. I mean, I quietly stepped away from the entire company. Oh, oh yeah. You know? So we talked about Ruby. Do you want to talk more about Ruby and like what the company turned into following that? Yeah, I'm happy to. It felt like they really wanted to move away from Red vs. Blue, which makes sense. It's like, they did. No, absolutely. It's a show that, you know, tied to Halo. And there, there's a little bit of like, you start to notice that they had to be really friendly with Microsoft. Because at any moment, some guy with a hair up his ass could just come into Microsoft and say, I hate these rooster guys. Let's get let let's copyright strike them because we don't want them making money off our off our product. At any mm -hmm. point, that could have happened. And so obviously they're thinking like we need to get our own stuff out there. That's why, you know, that's why they had their shows. That's why they have Achievement Hunter. That's why they have Ruby. Let's be real. There's a reason why Ruby was greenlit in such a rough state. Like they needed their own show out as soon as they had it. Which in a way, I guess they're lucky that they got it off early. Tragedy of Moniome. It's been many years, but it's still a tragedy. Very tragic what happened. It was still fucked up. Amazing animator. Say say what you want about his show. Amazing at choreographed fight scenes. Comes off as a real amazing dude. A lot of funny, a lot of funny stuff. Like I, again, I love his Haloid animation. <laughs> I talked about that before. Who doesn't love Haloid? And also his uh, Dead Fantasy series, I, th I think was the name of it. Those were really good too. Like the guy knew what he wanted to animate. It was very sudden, very out of yeah. nowhere. He's very young. It's for, yeah, it's freaky to go back to those old videos and those old podcasts and like, oh, Maniom sticks his head in and says something. 
And so after his passing, Ruby was taken over by the famous Ruby writing staff. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. They made like it got the show just kept on going. They made an anime at some point. I actually like the anime. Um but I think that's because Japan's writers had one thing very clearly in mind. They took it back to the school, and as much as you don't like a dream sequence, they made it a really fun dream sequence. Because it's still set in between season two and three. I assume the animation's a lot better, too. <laughs> it has rough spots. Okay. It just, it's in true Ruby form. It does have rough spots. Okay. But... What I like to call it is, you know how like Ruby liked to pull out the budget? Is what I liked to, when they had like the animated scene. You'll see the animation go from like a really stiff twenty four frames per second, which is fairly standard, to like these beautiful immaculate sixty frame per second animations. You're like, oh, somebody dropped money here. I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I believe you, Burke, yeah. but I you also don't gotta watch it. I also know moments where it looks like it animatic. It's like watching a you know star wars prequel watching it behind the scenes it's like oh here's oh yeah. here's here's <laughs> general here's general by. grievous and obi-wan stiffly fighting each other this is what it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna look it's gonna look good you guys trust me yeah this is just like the proof of concept for the scene yeah <laughs> you're not wrong you're not wrong the voice act it was the voices got real obnoxious i'm sorry the, I, I realized like because obviously rooster teeth they don't want to hire real voice actors because it's like that's expensive obviously it's like well, who do we have in our company who's already on our payroll i get that and i, I understand it, it works for red versus blue maybe a little more and even then the original cast they had for ruby was pretty good i'd say like barbara as yang barbara always killed it who is oh god Lindsay. i liked weiss's uh, voice actor. I didn't like her character, but that's what I say. Oh, I like that's a good voice actor. If someone can tell me that I don't like their character, and it's not because of their voice, it's because of how they use the voice. I'm like, that's a good actor. Like they they introduce this like edgy guy, and it's like, oh, he's this edgy romantic love interest for the cat lady, and I'm like, God, I'm sorry, that's just that's just Michael from Rage Quit. I'm sorry, I don't I don't I don't <laughs> I don't hear a, that character. I just hear Michael. Levels like that are near the end of the game. God! God damn it! Fuck this game! I'm fucking done with it! Fuck you! And the the only time it worked, and it was more of a meta sense that it worked. Hey, that's a nice pun. It's when the um, cops were like Bernie. No. Oh, well, Bernie is yes. is uh, Yang's dad. That that real that real that did work. It's like ah, I see. It's because it's like Bernie. He's kind of the dad of the company. I like Bernie. I like following him. Um, I don't follow him anymore. Mm -hmm. He's again, he kind of got obnoxious. But I liked him on the podcast. They're, they introduced their dad, and it's like, oh, it's Bernie. It's like, oh, that, that's nice. That's a nice little little callback. It's like, you know, if you know, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they, there's that Ruby uh, VTuber. Is They're that, still going, by the way. Is They're still going. Is Lindsay streaming? Is she still going to stream now that the company's I've defunct? I've seen a couple streams of them, but maybe it was before the stream ended. I mean, the company ended, but I could have sworn I saw that. I mean, I haven't seen a single. I'll, I'll be honest, Burke. I haven't seen a single stream from them. I don't. I had no idea that that was an act. That was anything other than that just was a short promo the video. Most surreal goddamn announcement of my life though that that ruby v vtuber announcement I'm like what i think that announcement came around the rumors that they were trying to sell off ruby and i think people were realizing like oh they're desperate which we're gonna get further into the dark ages there is a real bad show called genlock you know how every year one actor will get really big and he'll, they'll just throw them into a bunch of shit that they don't belong in um pedro pascal and that that year it was Michael B. Jordan. Genlock, they tried to make a mecha anime. Oh, hold on. It's coming back to me. I remember the mecha part. I remember the mecha part. I'm gonna part wash my mouth out for calling it a mecha anime. They made a, a Ruby yeah. animated style show that was that had robots in it. When they made the show, there was a famous quote. I god, I don't remember it exactly, but it was along the lines of we wanted to make a mecha that actually has good characters and good emotions and is actually written well. It's like a fuck you to all the mecha fans. So bad. It had two. It somehow had two seasons. I don't know. I don't know how that works. It's when like snarky people try and write a mecha show. This is a thing that happens every now and then. People are like, "We're get, we like giant robots. But we're gonna actually attach a real story to it." Which obviously you're pissing off the mecha fans. You're pissing off people like me who like Gundam and the. <laughs> characters are just season two ends with a character killing herself and, and it's 
it's painted as a good thing because she gets to go to like the afterlife and that's a good thing what <laughs> i'm not making this up <laughs> uh, you find every fucking time we do these you find a new way for me to just like pause for a second and go what was it i it's think that immaculate was, i think that was also this like around the same time ruby uh did that thing didn't she kill herself in the show to go to like some other afterlife realm Is you it? are talking to someone who didn't watch past okay i think i may have watched part of season four um okay no wait oh wait oh, wait wait i was so curious about that what you're talking about right there but i can confirm it low-key was that that they come back conspiracy yeah can i conspiracy talk uh, of course this is what we're here for this is what the people want homophobic ruby meme was 100 percent astroturfed <laughs> that that was straight up someone at Rishi oh, Teeth absolutely. was like we need we need someone to watch our show let's make me let's make ruby a meme <laughs> it's like it, 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 it caught you know there's what a very valid point you know what to that. it kind of worked because everyone was like oh what's going what's kind of going on here this looks kind of funny yeah because <laughs> I'll, I, I know. I think you're either onto something, or they had some intern do it, or I, if they had interns, I don't know how this fucking company works. But if you think about it, the only people who did care about Ruby were Ruby fans, <laughs> right? Like the the long haul. Maybe maybe someone was in the hate relationship of watching this show enough to put that up there. Maybe, maybe. It's that's all it is. I mean, hate watchers. For, I think that's all they have left. No, there's there are there are genuine corners of people that enjoy that show, and that's rough. That's all I'm gonna say. Homophobic memes are pretty funny, though. The meme, the meme, <laughs> memes are pretty funny. Uh, you're, look, you're, anything, Ru Ruby, that, like, you're being such a bigot. Ad hominem. I'm your sister. You should be happy to be feel the motion. I thought you supported gay rights. <laughs> straw man fallacy. You're on the wrong side of history. I know what feel you the are, historicism. It, it's. I know what you are. It was. That I 100% believe that was astroturfed. It depends on which one, because somebody <laughs> just had to put it out there, right? It, exactly. That's what exactly, I'm saying. Like, exactly. The, the, if you want to talk about the origin, absolutely. What the community did and ran with it, fuck no. Because <laughs> I don't think anyone who, who would try to astroturf that meme would be clever enough to come up with some of the people I saw did later. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Rooster Teeth. Too fucking funny. It was at, at a certain point. Okay, so I, I'm trying to remember my Rooster Teeth history here. So, Genlock, obviously, that was made. Michael B. Jordan was in it. That was them trying to, we're like, we're, that was them trying to be real television, essentially. At some point, there you could tell there was, uh, there, there was a struggle going on in the company on what they wanted to do. Yeah. Which we should go into some of the other things that's been happening. Mm -hmm. So at some point, Machinima went under. We talked about them earlier. Mm -hmm. What's funny, and I find this is something that nobody on earth but me knows about. And nobody on earth laughs at this the way I laugh at it. So Rooster Teeth had mm -hmm. a show, a channel called The No. Do you remember that, Burke? You can just say no if you don't. Can't say I know of it. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> the no was their game their uh game journalist uh company oh no and it was pretty bad it was and because here, here's the problem rooster teeth i said it earlier they're access media for the for those who don't know access media it's a term given to like companies who like the like game journalist sites you've got to be friendly with companies which means you can't criticize. Com controversy within another company, you can't criticize them. Activision, Microsoft, mm -hmm. Sony, Nintendo, stuff's happening with them. You can't criticize them at all. You have to be friendly. Ha ha ha. We're all we're all smiles here. Yeah, we're going to promote your game. We're going to sponsor your game. We're going to we're going to talk very glowingly about your game in our article, in our video. We're going to be very happy with your game. No, we're not going to criticize your microtransactions. I famously Rooster Teeth was when the during the Xbox One debacle, uh, when that when they announced that piece of shit, uh, Rooster Teeth were the one company out there who was staunchly defending the Xbox One. Essentially attacking people, they were literally going on podcasts and openly talking about how I don't they we just don't see anything wrong with the Xbox One. I don't know why people are making such a big deal about it. You got to remember, that's Microsoft. You've got to be they've got to be buddy buddy with Microsoft. Whatever Microsoft does, yeah, they got to. 100% agree with that. That's otherwise, the horror. That's the legitimate horror of being owned by that company. Yep. And so that's why, that's just why they're Access Media, because they are. The no was that. It was, 
every awful IGN video, every awful IGN podcast. But the no was awful. Everyone hated the no. They had horrible takes. Um, at some point, the, I, don't, I forget, Machinima got acquired by the company that owns Rooster Teeth. So there was a funny period of time where Rooster Teeth had access to all of Machinima. And it was kind of fun. What? It, I'm serious. They had ac They had Machinima, the Machinima YouTube channel. And they were like, they were trying to figure out like, because Machinima got rid of all their videos. And they're like, we're going to try and bring our videos back up. Like everything. We're going to try and, we don't have all of it, but we're going to try and bring all this stuff up. I mean, for those who don't know, Machinima turned into a real clusterfuck near the end. It started off as like, hey, we're, we're sponsoring, we're helping Machinima creators make their content. We're providing them ad revenue because that wasn't a thing in YouTube. Made mm -hmm. made people sign a bunch of bad contracts. Notoriously bad contracts. Then it devolved into really awful Call of Duty commentary stuff. Then they tried to become a real company. They tried to they 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 had their own. They they tried to do their own like TV shows. They were obviously weren't making money. Then they just kind of became a place where com companies would just put their video game trailers or just trailers in general on. They kind of IGN, sort of what IGN is now. And yeah, just they lost a lot of money. They closed closed down because everybody left because they didn't know how to run their company. My One of my favorite streamers, the Mr. Sark, who talks a lot about it when he, his days at Machinima Respawn, and he talks about all about company management. We, this is old news to me, but I recognize to some people they probably don't know. Mm -hmm. Unmotivated day. No, I have. I don't it's go. just like it feels kind of... I don't want to leave! I don't want to go! But yeah, Machinima closed down, got acquired by the company that owns Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth, essentially, they had, the, uh, they had a, essentially their own little playground where they had all of Machinima's, not just Machinima, but all of Machinima's channels, which included Inside Gaming. To recap, Inside Gaming, that was Machinima's news channel. They left, formed Funhouse, and then they they had Inside Gaming again. So the Funhouse stayed Funhouse, but Rooster Teeth hilariously immediately got rid of the no because everybody hated the no and they just rebranded the no to inside gaming i'm not kidding they they understood that everyone hated the no and so they just they quietly shelved it and just transformed it back into inside gaming because everyone kind of remembered inside gaming and they kind of had fond memories of that so i, I find that kind of funny nobody remembers this but i laughed because it's like oh god the no is so hated they had to change the name even just changing the name is like an admission of like yeah we don't we don't like the no either but yeah, that's me talking about a uh, an awful channel that has not existed for many years at this point. This was the start um, of Rooster Teeth's downfall. And I should ask you, Burke, are you aware of what was going on at Rooster Teeth? Like circa 2019, 2020? I mean, I'm willing to bet you some form of harassment of some sort. That's usually what goes down on these things based on what I know of Activision and Blizzard. Yes. Shenanigans. Yes. So um, it came out that their CEO was uh, beating his wife. That was in November of 2019. <laughs> Full on got arrested because <laughs> he was assaulting his wife. You don't do that. Oopsie doopsie. A year later, Ryan Haywood. Do you know who that is by chance? Do you know who Ryan was from Achievement Hunter? Was he's not Rage guy, right? No, that's Michael. That's Michael. He, he, he's the guy who kind of sounds like Jack. Okay. Uh, and then Adam Kovic, who is the the main guy, the, essentially the guy who founded Inside Gaming, he, and then then he was in Funhouse. Turned out they were both in very bad sexual scandals. Stuff that I can't really say on YouTube. I'll I'll tell it to you. <laughs> one is way more funnier than the other. Um, <laughs> How can one be funny? All right, okay. all right, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, so Ryan Haywood was allegedly texting underage fans. Keep in mind, he's a dude who was married and had a kid. The certified hood classic of internet famedom. I swear to God. And he got run out of the company. They got rid of him. And he's kind of just disappeared from life. Who even knows what happened? Adam Kovic was a little funnier, <laughs> funnier in a, as Plankton would say, in a cosmic sort of way. Yeah. <laughs> He, I can't even say this on YouTube. He was going around the Funhouse offices and relieving himself. Not in a, I have to take a piss way, but in a, yeah, I have know, to. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> it was on. Uh, giving a one old, giving a little sausage pol polishing session. I get what you're putting down. On like people's desks and stuff. And this, he was taking <laughs> pictures and he was, <laughs> he was, uh, caught because some someone just unfortunately found these images of adam 
doing these things. And it fucking exploded. Uh, I think Lawrence came out. I, some of the funniest was like Lawrence talking about how like grossed out he was because <laughs> like those were people's desks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it, again one is way more funnier than the other like mm -hmm. but this happened and it's it's just it's just funny it's really funny what was happening this was this was when it was a fun time to be a to, to know what who rooster teeth was but yeah he got fired funhouse kind of split up after the, the funhouse was already splitting off but this killed it because bruce and lawrence had left and were doing their own thing and yeah the, it just became a totally different channel an awful channel and uh, yeah, it was real funny. It was real. It's real funny. Just this all happening in the span of like a single week. Yeah, you know the hits just don't stop coming, do they? Rooster Teeth started off as a very edgy company. It, bunch of bunch of guys, you know, college, fresh out of college guy. I say fresh out of college, like early twenties dudes from like it's circa you know 2003 they like to get they like to drink alcohol they like to party they like to play halo like you can imagine what type of culture those guys have you know and as the, they started growing as a company you can tell that they really tried to to get rid of that they're like we're we're gonna put on a face of a we're because you know we're a company now you're in the tech space you're dealing with as i said you're dealing with all these other companies like you know based in silicon valley well first off the the first big change that people realize is they fired joel actually i i totally realized i got the timeline wrong they fired joel before the adam and ryan controversy do we know why they fired joel was joel just kind of being not good pr people don't quite know joel's politics he tweeted some stuff uh during the may 2020 riots which again is very re relevant to me because I fucking lived in those riots. Yeah. <laughs> and so did I. I I'm not going to dox where I live, but yeah, no, I, 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 we both know where we are. Joel made some tweets. I'm going to show the tweets here. I'll be honest. These are like really, these are nothing tweets. These are like tweet. If you're like, if you're trying to grasp for some, it's like trying to show someone being like, I don't know, bigoted or like if, the, the, they always, they always say that Joel's like a right winger. Like he's a conservative or whatever. Like you see these tweets, like they're jokes. It's like you don't, I don't, I don't really like that image that they paint of him because it's he. He was obviously tweeting about what was going on, mm -hmm. and he got fired after that. So the everyone assumes like, oh, he got fired because he made probably some some edgy tweets. Uh, it's not even that edgy. Like he made some poignant tweets. Probably didn't follow the company's values, and he's been fired ever since. Wild. And they came out that they were fucking. Ha they had a fucking. Um, groomer and a sex pest still working for them so that's kind of funny a couple years later came out a uh a kaden jensen i don't know how to pronounce her name uh used to be an achievement hunter employee they came out and she talked about <laughs> what it was like working at the company uh first off it was some basic stuff awful crunch culture obviously it's, it's a tech company they don't know how to manage it's 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 a company run by people who don't know how to run companies that how that's that's why you get crunch culture people who don't know how to how to manage a staff it's like we have to every we're rushing everybody to to quick work on our shitty ruby shows she didn't get paid she talked about that and then she talked about how they were uh they nick her nickname in the company was a slur what <laughs> her nickname the nickname that they gave her was just a slur <laughs> and she said it and a bunch of news sites got all on board going after rooster teeth and then all the rooster teeth staff they did make their dumb like apology tweets saying i well i'm a changed person i i was a different man back then uh, we're we're sorry for what we did what always happens is Jeff. Whenever a controversy happens, Jeff goes on a podcast and starts crying. You could really, t you could really tell that he's he was losing his mental state. He's going on stream, crying, apologizing for what he's done. This is pretty funny. On you mean the guy who plays Griff? <laughs> Griff, yeah, Jeff. Jesus Christ, mate. And uh, that was kind of it. That was like the last big controversy. And uh, yeah, they've just been they've been shedding members since. Oh, they already left. And it was like a fucking punch to the gut that I I needed, um, and I and I and I guess I should say I failed the audience as well by not being a better example for you. Earlier this year, it was announced that the company shut down, and it's very interesting. A lot of stuff came out about Rooster Teeth because it turned out that so it was Warner Discovery that is the parent company. Of Rooster Teeth. They were looking to sell Rooster Teeth. 
to another to an interested buyer and nobody was interested <laughs> nobody made an offer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which tells you a lot of things it tells you they weren't making money they absolutely weren't none of their ips were making enough money to be worth purchasing actually i have a theory about one of them and they just obviously that's that's what happens the com- they just decide hey we're done with this company. Like the forums had long been closed. Rooster Teeth was just this wannabe TV show pr- production house. Like they wanted to make, and they, they kind of did. They were like making like really bad TV shows and it, they just weren't making money. And they had a bad writing staff. They had lost the charm of their early days and they got shut down. And on, I believe it was May 10th. That's when they shut down. And uh, a couple interesting things came out of it. So first off, Ruby. Everyone yeah. wants to know. Everyone fucking wants to know what's happening with Ruby. Which tells me something. It tells me Ruby probably is somewhat self-sustaining. Probably doesn't make that much money, but pro- at, at at least enough to keep itself going. That's my understanding. Because if it's losing money, you don't you don't have people who are gonna say we're gonna keep this show going. Like no, you're losing money. You're not. What are you gonna do? Like one extra season and that's it. They have a very dedicated fan base. I respect that component. The Ruby fandom is scary. Oh, it's, it's, it's fucking terrifying, man. I've <laughs> seen what they've written. They must know that they have enough money to keep on going. They're, and they're, that's probably what's going to happen. They're just going to keep making Ruby shit until they stop making money. But yeah, I, I would imagine that of all the shows that made some money, it probably would be Ruby. RVB doesn't. Ber- As I said, Bernie and Matt came on to do that last RVB season it was or I say season it was a movie I wasted fucking $15 to buy it on Amazon <laughs> that's sad it's just sad that you mentioned fan fiction earlier with how like it, it sounded like v- red versus blue it turned into what felt like fan fiction that movie literally feels like I'm reading someone's fan fiction it literally feels like I'm reading like here's the episode where so and so dies and the meta comes back and the characters are all funny and another character comes back and it's like, I'm just reading fan fiction. I'm reading, wor- it's worse than fan fiction because at least with fan fiction, I can just imagine that it, lo- it looks cool in my head. I'm watching this show that's shot in Halo Infinite on Halo Infinite Machinima and now I just feel bad because I'm staring at Halo Infinite. As, as we all know, Halo Infinite, it's like a death eater. It just sucks away your soul the more you stare at it. And... It, yeah, it's just sad. It's sad what, what happened, and this is it. This is the end. I guess in a very fi- fitting way, which probably would have made, you know, the original founders of the company, like, laugh at least. The uh, it, In a fitting way, the sh- it ends with a whimper, and not with a funny <laughs> ending. Like, it, it ends just very pathetically. As they once penned that in themselves. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's where we're at. I don't know what's going to happen. I think what we're, we're gonna, I think what we're gonna see, is we're gonna see a lot of the top Rooster Teeth talent survive on their own. We've already been seeing it before. Obviously, Ray is making doing perfectly fine streaming on his own. People like Gavin are probably gonna keep on going. They're gonna do the slow mo guys. Like he's got his phantom camera. Like he he will just keep on going. Gavin is so ingrained with just internet culture in general of such a broad networking and as far as I can tell an unblemished record that he'll be fine I think that kid sorry I shouldn't say kid because it's just it's surreal to know that uh, this was someone I was potentially messaging semi-frequently you know in that little forearm back when it was a it's just a small community that, kid, that guy's gonna go great he's doing awesome I also have a soft spot for Gavin because like who else would ever message a company and be like give me job and Rooster Teeth was like, "Fuck it, we ball." They had they had a final stream. A it was like a, a god. It went on for like six or seven hours. Then they had a last final mm-hmm. podcast. And I remember the thing. I remember sitting there uh, on the stream. Like they had, they brought out. They didn't bring out everybody. Um, Jeff was obviously crying again. Barbara was crying. That was pretty. That was that was actually pretty bad watching her. Someone in the comments said something that really messed with my brain. Cause she started, she it talked about how she got into RVB when she was like a teenager. And then mm-hmm. she, as a young adult, she joined the company and has been with them for like 15 years. And so yeah. someone has said like her entire life was that. And now it's over because people out of her control decided to just fuck up the company. And now 
what was her entire life is just gone. Um, that, that messes with my brain. And Bernie's there. Bernie, they brought back Bernie. Um, they had a bunch of just random people. There. I think it was like they had production people there. And I, I know people in the comments were complaining. They're like, bring us, you know, bring us Joel. We want the old guard back. But I get it. You know, they got to show off the, the whole cast. It's like, you know, it's like Johnny Carson on, you know, his show saying goodbye to everybody. Like bringing out the production team and showing everybody like, here's who, here's who made the show. And he, Bernie even said a very Johnny Carson line when it ended. Yeah, and then the pod, they had a pod, final podcast. They play that final podcast was weird because it didn't feel like the end. It felt like they were, they were still pretty casual about it. Uh, but the one thing that really stuck with me is how old everybody is. Oh yeah, everybody is so old, and I, I mean that like in a way where I'm like, you should be doing your own thing. I, wasn't that Rooster Teeth around for like 20-ish years, give or take? 21, maybe? Over 20 years. Uh, 2003. Most of those folks that started this company were like 30 yeah. when they started. So so they're like um, they're hitting, they're hitting like almost in their 50s. Like Gavin has gray hair. I'm watching him on his show, and he's got gray hair. And Barbara, you know, she's old. she looks older. Fucking P- Gus looks like the Crypt Keeper. Bernie, like, yeah, obviously he's... he's He's got a head full of gray hair. And it's like, as sad as this is, a part of me is like, oh, I guess this is it. Like, Rooster Teeth, like, there really, because there really is nowhere else for it to go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just, it kind of made me realize, like, maybe this is it. Like, maybe this is how things should be. And it really is the end of an era. It's the end of a period of time on the internet where it felt like anybody could make it or anybody can form their company. Anybody can do whatever the hell they want. That's kind of it. Like, it's kind of it now. You can't. Yeah. A company like Rooster Teeth just can't exist anymore. Like it's and it's so weird. Like if you try to explain to somebody like Rooster Teeth, like how did Rooster Teeth start? Well, okay, they played around in Halo and and they made they made this thing called Machinima where they looked the, they pointed their camera down at the ground and they made the characters bob up and down to talk. And they made a show around that. It sounds ridiculous when you explain it to somebody now, but that's that's how they did it. And back in the day, that was enough. That's all we needed. And you just don't have that anymore. You don't have that creative spark i think there's always still room for it there's still room for it but like yeah you have to find it you have to go at it solo it feels like can't really like it's rare for you know a group of young people to start a company like rooster teeth like man mega 64 is still going you know certain companies are still going um it's fun seeing you know people like it's fun seeing like old Newgrounds guys still making it big. We we talk about smiling friends like that. That's just smiling friends. That that's just a sign that like the the old Newgrounds team still have it. The old Newgrounds creators they still got it. it, it more importantly, it showed that that type of humor is still funny. It's just it's I still mean, good. It's just it's still valid. It's just nice seeing uh, internet people break into the mainstream. It's still nice seeing that. Twerp made a really good commentary. Uh, they're a band, Tempo Remix Party. Um, this is another tangent uh, of you know thing from an era. Go ahead. N- they were no- famous because they did a collab with Ninja Sex Party, which, as you know, is half of Game Grumps. But they made a new album recently because I'm a big tour pad. They're one of my favorite, like from rags to like semi-successful touring bands. Uh, but they have a song called "Content for You," where it's we've been working so hard just to find a way to break through all the noise to give you something to enjoy. And it's a YouTube. It's a song about fighting YouTube. And I, I I think that's the, what we're fighting against with content these days i know that's a random out of pocket thought but it's what i think about when it's like you can't have rooster teeth anymore end of an era <laughs> um right, more of like the era has already left and this is like the final this is like the final goodbye it's like we're, we're finally out of it we're finally out of, of, of like what was the golden age of the internet where you could just do anything i also find it ironic how rooster teeth died at 21 years old for a company that originally started as drunk gamers, I found that, I found that kind of funny. <laughs> oh, that's that's actually. I haven't seen anyone acknowledge that. No, that's that's the perfect type of humor, especially for Red versus Blue Rooster Teeth, because you know they end the line on "Ain't that a bitch?" something like that. It was part of internet culture, and then it really started to decline. And every now and then, you would hope that, oh, they're, they're, maybe they're going to find their way. This this wasn't that bad of a season of RVB. Ruby's going to get good eventually. I don't understand the Ruby Cope. I'll be honest, Burke. I don't understand what people saw on that show other than <sighs> the characters for fan art or cosplay. I mean, I can tell you up to my Cope for season three. <laughs> what was it? What was it? 
well, it was just, there was a very promising overall narrative. There was. You got this fascinating world with all these cool fucking badass mythological creatures of a bunch of weapon designs that could be really fun to look at. Because I'm a bit of a weapons nerd, right? Like, so for me, I'm just drooling a little over, like, the fantasy element of it, right? So I'm willing to forgive some bad writing and some janky-ass animation. There's only so much I can forgive before I'm like, when does it end? When is it going to get good? It never ends. <laughs> and then that's when I was like, all right, season three. You had your chance, but you wrote off two of your most interesting characters to me. They wrote off two of their most interesting characters. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, okay. I think, uh, and I watched a little bit of season four, and I'm like, okay, is this the direction they're going with? Uh-uh. This, this is not going to be good. And then Ruby killed herself. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, Season nine. that's a good metaphor for the show. <laughs> I could just take yeah. taking that out of context. It's like the show or the character. She became homophobic and drank poison wine so she didn't have to deal with her sister. <laughs> Look, that's funny. That's funny taken out of context. That makes me want to watch the show. Yeah. Then I'm going to realize how bad it is again. Uh, but yeah. The season, RVB season, I keep talking about that That season finale. That series finale was so bad. It sounds like it really pissed you off. It did. And I hate how everybody's defend. There are people defending it. There's people who are like. There's always, so nostalgia has a ha nasty tinge, you know? Oh, yeah. Because it's something that's more important to you and what it meant to you. And it's hard to separate that for some people, I think. Yeah. Because it meant so much to them. Yeah, there's definitely that. It's p people who... You're totally right. Nostalgia. People were posting the finale out of context on Twitter, and everybody yeah. was like, "Oh my gosh, the the red versus blue ended." Oh, I'm I'm gonna cry. It's like, no, you're you didn't even see the whole movie that was that that was attached to. So, yeah, with RVB, I'm kind of just done. Like people, people want more. They want more Rooster Teeth. It's like, I've said I've said my goodbyes. I'll be honest. I get my old RVB itch from. Uh, from watching Crash. Uh, do you know what that is, Mark, <laughs> by chance? No, I don't, but I'm fascinated. Is a guy who's making a Halo 3 machinima, and that's it. That's all you need to know. That's all it is. It's a wonderful little show, all set, set in Halo 3. That's all I wanted, and it's perfect, and it's not shot in Halo Infinite with a really awkwardly dubbed caboose. <laughs> that's where I'm getting my uh, RVB fix. I don't need to. I don't need to pretend that this season finale is good. I can just enjoy what I've got. A Sammy defense system. I thought they stopped making those years ago. It's powered by a dumb AI. Fuck you. And yeah, a end of an era. It it'll be sad, you know. What the thing that was remarkable to me is how, with this announcement, I don't haven't. I have not seen a lot of people lament it. The overwhelming response I see is people who either didn't know that Rooster Teeth wasn't already closed down or people just kind of thinking to themselves like, thank God it's finally over. <laughs> like almost a, a sigh of relief that it's like, it's we're finally done with this thing. That's rough. That's it. That's it for, that's it for Rooster Teeth. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, I was saying this earlier, but we're probably going to see like some of the creators, some of the content creators, like, they're, they're probably going to make their... They're probably going to be able to do their own thing. We're, this is a sink or swim moment for a lot of people at the company. And I think this might be... This is going to be a good showcase of who was carrying Rooster Teeth and who was weighing it down. Oh. With who, who might... Who's going to keep on going? And I think a lot of them... I think a lot of the people are just going to just retire. Like, Bernie's pretty much... I don't know what Bernie's doing anymore. He, he's got his own, like, little thing... He's got his family. Like, he's doing his own thing. Same with Jeff. Bernie's probably... Jeff got married. A lot of those of the original staff are, you know, you have 20 years of resume experience, give or take, uh, based on the company time. They could probably get into producer roles at this point uh, for other shit. And that... Oh, they have. I hate... They, I, they have, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I'm saying they can continue to do that. And that's steady, solid work. A lot of voice actors, mm -hmm. um, when they're no longer in the field... Right or like actors, they just become producers because they keep working in the field. Yep. So they they got the tenured connections. There's, they they yeah. definitely do. There's nothing wrong with that. It's but it's it's never going to be Rooster Teeth. And the sad reality is they know that experience of a lifetime. They know it's over. It's okay to have experience ends. It's the flow of life. It is. I'm not, it is. I'm not trying to get oh, deep oh, yeah. about it. I'm, but... And I'm with you. I'm with you. Just it's it is sad. 
it is it's sad to have a part of my childhood that was there for a while too R astonishing how long it was there it's sad to have that gone and you know what i'll miss them 21 years of shit posting off drunken gaming oh yeah is a hell of a run full stop they should be proud of what they created maybe not maybe not near the end <laughs> the some of them are gonna have some of them are gonna keep on going some of them maybe are not <laughs> The only time will tell. Ruby's probably. I'm. I'm gonna say it. Ruby's gonna keep on going. Yeah. Some way, somehow. Some somehow is somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> is Lindsay? Is you. Lindsay? Is she actually doing the Ruby streams? Because like she's a she like she's a mom. Like she's got a life outside of every of outside of everything. Like why is she? If you want me to spill the beans on their stream a little bit, because I've watched a couple of them okay. out of idle curiosity. Okay. <laughs> They're mostly just really comfy streams. She usually plays something like Palia. They're usually like very consistent consistently two hours mm. so it's one of those what they do is a very consistent like almost i say by the number stream if that makes any sense i see i want to see ruby talk about her beliefs on homosexuality <laughs> <laughs> that was it that was uh, rooster teeth we'll miss it or will we really i don't know i yeah the thing the thing that everyone kind of realizes is we miss what rooster teeth was not what it became and Maybe one of these days, someone will carry the torch. Probably not. But yeah, when I say it's the end of an era, it really is. Because you have... You, you had channels, like... I always think of, like, the creatures. You had Machinima. All very much paralleled Rooster Teeth. These channels that were built off of people's personalities. And then those people started splitting off from the company. And then the company couldn't figure out what to do. And they tried to corporatize. They tried to do all this shit. And then stop. It didn't work. And then they had, they had to hit the eject button. And then it became real, like, annoying slop near the end. And then everybody stopped watching. And then they, they ended things. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. It was just remarkable that Rooster Teeth lasted as long as it did. There are people who discovered Rooster Teeth who were born after Rooster Teeth started as a company. There are, cause I know that I can guess the average age of someone who fucking watches Ruby. Like they were not even a thing. They were not even in, in existence when fucking red and red team and blue team were duking it out on blood gulch. <laughs> anyway, that's my ramble. Do you have anything left to say? Burke? Nah. I think we covered all the points. Be happy it happened and be thankful it's over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be real thankful that it's over. God, can you imagine what the next... Could you imagine after RVB Zero, what were they originally going to do for the next Vrid versus Blue season? They already wrote the stuff in the corner. What were they going to do? That's remarkable. I'm pretty sure at that point, they would have just let AI take the wheel and just roomed it may as well i i assume that's what's already been happening that's probably who's writing ruby these days Oof. that's why ruby fucking drank poison <laughs> the ai broke i'm glad it's over <laughs> i'm glad it's over too 